Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. It's been a pretty interesting week in EVE Online. CCP came out with the patch for direct enlistment. So at this point, uh, if you go to Faction Warfare, let's see if I can actually find it here. So we, Factional Campaigns is something different. I think you want to go... Um, bu -bu -bum. Where is it? Encounters maybe? Factional Warfare, there we go. Uh, you can open the factional warfare window and then uh, I could enlist for Kaldari right here in Jita 4.4 um, or uh, if it's for another empire you have to uh, basically go to a specific station you can just go there then enlist and take part in faction warfare activities so I personally thought that we would see a little bit more uh, hype around this and also a little bit more content actually I thought they would maybe develop some high six sites or, or stuff like that for faction warfare but that's not the case instead we have uh, something else so let's go back to the home page we have the new factional campaign for the shipcaster shadow war so this one basically uh, pits the uh, main empires um some of them are already having a leg up when they won a, a previous uh, factional campaign. Uh, but the goal, I think, here for CCP is to uh, get to a new uh, starting point where the four empires are uh, equal and they all develop this shipcaster uh, technology. And so I, I think here uh, that the CCP just they, they wanted to get the... Um, the extra potential influx for factional warfare through direct enlistment they want to get that done they did promise that for q1 so uh, that's what we got but i think the plan here now is for extra content to go towards the next expansion and the 20 year anniversary for eve online so they're keeping their powder dry yet again that's unfortunately uh, sometimes uh, the name of the game i think in game development as well uh, that they're keeping the real hype stuff the real new stuff uh, for uh, for for um, the 20 year anniversary uh, and their next expansion announcement. Uh, at the same time, I do think that they're basically pretty lucky with that timing because in Nullsec, uh, things are kicking off quite a lot and there's there's quite a bit of action, uh, structures being destroyed, lots of propaganda on the subreddit. So if you want to read up on that, it's always pretty cool to watch uh, how players uh, interact. Um, through, uh, through the propaganda uh, but yeah it's in Nullsec where there's a lot of action and so rather than expecting big market moves because of the patch I think we can expect uh, bigger moves because of what's happening in Nullsec. We'll so also take a quick look at the new Eden store because there is a sale happening at the moment I'm not sure if it's in the store or on the website there's definitely still a sale for apparel so if you complete three uh, I think you, you can still just make it but if you complete uh, three um, login uh, missions then uh, you take part in the uh, tapestry uh, for the 20 year anniversary and so let's go back here uh, that's the reason why lots of uh, of apparel is actually on sale at the moment because you can then uh, spice up your character po portrait for that uh, event and then if we go to the services now it's not here so it's on a website that we're getting like a 10 percent off and you also get uh, some of the new skins uh, if you buy plex and plex packages so impact on the market here i would expect a bit more supply in plex and maybe some pressure on the price you may already have seen that price actually hasn't moved all that much but let's get started let's get into the pilot services and that's coming in at 350 there we go as always we start with the chart of plex and you can see that basically uh the previous sale did increase volumes quite a lot but we are actually seeing downwards pressure since then we're back below the 4.5 million on average oh and ccb actually uh might have listened a little bit because this is far more visible now again uh, the four point million mark here uh, so thank you very much uh, whoever <laughs> I think someone at CCP must be uh, watching Eve talk from time to time so thank you very much for making uh, the uh, chart uh, uh, a little bit more visible here and so we are basically stabilizing here for Plex this while there is a Plex sale happening so I would say I am seeing a little bit of upwards pressure already we did go down from uh, well uh, above the 4.5 million to well below the 4.5 million in not a lot of time a pretty big move for uh, what's basically one of the major currencies in the game and so i think a little bit of upwards pressure after that decline is now on the books but it's immediately being countered by uh, 
the sale that CCP uh, that CCP is holding and so we are stable at the current price well if we look back at just the last couple of months I think lots of players can be very happy with that but we are still talking 4.6 million for a single plex in GTA 4.4 4.3 million for the buyers here so very narrow uh, spread and then in the player on trade hubs a little bit of action but for plex we know that goes through the app and things like that as well so GTA 4.4 really is the place where the cutting edge trade for plex is happening uh, my personal expectation here again is going to start to depend on what CCP announces next. It's not that long anymore until May and the 20 year anniversary. If I'm not mistaken, there was uh, an expansion on the roadmap mentioned there as well. So that still uh, leaves us uh, yeah, not that much time for announcements, information, dev blocks and stuff like that. So we could be up for uh, a hype building uh, event that happens now in the upcoming months and that could really change the dynamic because as I mentioned in I think the last couple of if talks we're starting to see a decline which from my historical perspective is basically early I would have expected this to happen around uh, that anniversary of EVE Online and then throughout the summer that's where we usually get the lowest price point for Plex jump in then and then winter especially a winter now when things are kicking off in Nelsec has usually been a top for Plex so we are pretty close to that just a little bit of an early decline which may be a little bit too early looking at what's happening at the moment. Next up, we have the multiple pilot train certificate that's sort of, I think, confirming that at the moment you would expect a little bit more of an upward trend still in the market. Um, and uh, this one is continuing to go up well above the 2 billion mark and is at a one year high point. You can even see some daily averages that are well above the 2 billion mark. At the same time, though, it does look like it's getting to be a little bit too much for the market as the volumes are really dwindling down to absolutely nothing. We're, we have a couple just two of them uh, available in GDA uh, at 2.2 billion and then 1.9 billion for the buyer. So the action is in Plex, I guess the price for a multiple pirate trading certificates, which is, uh, you know, equivalent in, in some ways, you could say, to an old Plex that would give you 30 days game time. And that goes for 2 billion, but is also, of course, a significant uh, chunk of, of real life money compared to the Plex packages. There's probably uh, other deals, more affordable deals uh, to, to do for, for a slower trickle down, uh, but a continued supply. This here really is completely stalling. Next, we have the skill extractors, of course, that should follow the price of Plex uh, quite closely. We can see we have a different chart, and that is because we had some very specific Plex-related sales in the New Eden store and now outside of the New Eden store, but nothing so much for the skill extractors. And here you can see that hesitation, and this is far more the uh, pattern that I would have remembered historically. Now, we start to basically form a bit of a top around the... Uh, uh, winter time of course you always have uh, a disruption from a sale here in January you can very clearly see huge volumes this was a sale very specifically for the extractors but if we didn't have that uh, you could I think see here a nice top centered around the winter a little bit of hesitation here depending on what CCP starts to announce for that May uh, period and then of course towards the summer that's when we usually start to see that decline uh, so definitely uh, very different charts this time between players and the skill extractors despite the fact that usually their correlation is quite strong the impact on the injectors then uh, these ones are staying quite high but you know again uh, maybe a bit of a delayed top but I, we can clearly I think see that we we're not just going to continue straight up to a billion or anything like that I'm starting to feel that while it is close to the one year high point we are starting to slow down you can also see how the 20 day moving average is coming in nicely right on that 20, 5 day moving average right at the tail end daily average is starting to go uh, above and below those margin, uh, those marks as well so overall large scale injectors I think are topping out 966 uh, million for the sellers 920 3 million for the buyers spread is actually kind of decent it's not 10 percent it's not great but uh, we've definitely seen uh, smaller spreads on this one as well and uh, I think I still hold one large scale injector that I bought for like 700 million isk. So I think uh, for me, this is the time to start to take some profit. Again, always with that one warning, don't spook the market too much. Uh, don't uh, sell hundreds of large scale injectors all of a sudden trying to take advantage of, of, uh, of the top because then you're of course going to uh, create a self-fulfilling prophecy here. Uh, but this to me really does feel like we are in the best possible period for large scale injectors. And unless, I mean, there is still a gamble to 
take here. If CCP comes out with, for instance, that uh, new ship caster technology, maybe new ships and things like that, uh, faction warfare stuff for the expansion that will require skill training, then of course you should hold on to your large skill injectors. If you don't think that's the case, perhaps this is the time to sell. Definitely uh, an interesting period in my opinion, as we have the small skill injectors that are sort of confirming the same thing this time, except as always it has a little bit more um, volatility to it so it, it basically forms a little bit of, of a clearer top at around uh, 195 million and you can now see that the five day moving average and the daily averages have mostly gone below the 20 day moving average volume starting to taper off just a little bit here as well to me clearly a sign that the market is hesitating and is not willing to just go straight up to 200 million or anything like that and this is clearly the time to do so uh, 193 million for the sellers 183 million for the buyers and perhaps perhaps also uh, what's going to start to come into play is the fact that the patch for direct enlistment i mean it gives us an event which i think is pretty cool uh the event is organized quite quite uh, nicely so uh, you've got data sites and you've got combat sites there are some of those in high as well you don't even need to take be uh, enlisted to take part in all of that and then on top of that they've got they've added this layer where you can basically buy uh, blueprints and the resources in order to make the necessary items for your the empire of your choice to make progress in uh, the research towards this new ship caster technology uh, so i myself am now in a mars space our old stomping grounds of of the tall uh, or a place where those sites are spawning. I've got a, uh, a scanning frigate ready, so I'm probably gonna try to do some of those data sites, but I'm also looking at how much supply there is so that eventually I can hopefully, uh, you know, uh, use my wallet and help the Galente out by buying out players and then building the stuff that, uh, that the Galente need, because they're obviously lagging behind quite a lot, if I'm not mistaken, if we go here. Uh, oh, we never really get, uh, I think it, sort of changed maybe the window with a patch or something like that um, but there should be a place where you can see how uh, everyone is uh, progressing anyways we still have a couple more to do here so after the uh, small scale injectors we have the daily alpha injector that is flattening out just above 50 million is here i think uh, a pretty happy ccp uh, with that at this point 50 million for the sellers 46 million for the buyers still means we've got a slight inflation uh, compared to where we used to have our daily alpha injectors mostly but on this one year chart here with uh, which i think uh, starts to have a pretty uh, sizable chunk of it let's see if i'm right on that yeah a pretty sizable chunk of it almost all of it uh, coming after the real life price changes that ccp put in this is a pretty decent one year result the th the, the question though is how quickly will that market start to break uh, in the sense that we're going up well above 50 million and then will CCP intervene like here, here and here and my prediction is that this will have to be uh, start to be done more and more often if they want to keep daily alpha injectors on that 50 million range at least certainly below that 50 million range. We will see, of course, how that evolves. And then Hypercourse, I like the Hypercourse for the general expectation uh, in the game, although it is, again, a, a niche item used in the Hypernet Relay. It does show a little bit, I think, about activity, expectation of ISK value, uh, inflows, and things like that. And here you can clearly see that we are declining substantially, coming from a, a one-year high point of 600,000 ISK. So definitely a little bit of hype happening here in January, probably also due to uh, the uh, Plex for Good Drive, uh, some... Uh, some sales happen there in order to fund uh, quite a lot of Plex, uh, but uh, the general trend is clearly uh, sustainably down, down to 460,000 for the sellers and 442 for the buyers. So very, very nar narrow spread here on the downside. So we could basically, I think, stall at any time here as well. Uh, eventually, I think the hypercore market cannot deny what's happening with Plex, which is going to start to stabilize, I think. Skill extractors, clearly a pretty stable situation there as well. And then the multiple power trains, if it's going higher and higher on lower and lower volumes, there is no uniform expectation that we have to go down in price at the moment. And I think it will, again, all depend on what CCP has planned for May for their 20-year anniversary. Next up, we have the mineral market that's coming in at 1440. 
there we go let's get started as always with Tritanium you may already have seen that on the ticker as well lots of gains last week uh, probably in part due to uh, Nelsic but perhaps in part as well due to uh, a little bit of hype expecting uh, a lot of uh, potential uh, action and stuff to do around the uh, direct enlistment but as I said no new faction warfare content instead we got an event that on the one hand is pretty cool but is also very punishing because going into any of these sites makes you uh, suspect so you can then get blown up by anyone it is quite risky to take part in that especially as a, a solo neutral player so uh, I think here perhaps there is a little bit less activity less immediate loss uh, than, than what they're expecting from that point of view and so we basically lost all the gains we made last week Tritanium is back down to let's take a look at the GDA prices here 411 for the sellers 401 for the buyers so we're still uh, healthily holding on to that 4 uh, ISK mark supplies though quite ample 400 million units 300 million units another 100 million another 100 million here buyers though at 4 ISK 2.5 billion is definitely a lot as well the demand is there uh, it's just not going as crazy as what the market expected last week so i think we'll see a little bit of a pullback here as well well a slight pullback for pyrite but actually holding on quite well five day and daily moving averages staying above the 20 days so that's pretty damn impressive almost 13 is for the sellers and 11 20 for the buyers a bit of spread opening up there so clearly the market is starting to hesitate here as well um and uh, the question is how long can pyrite hold on to the current price range average price range which is probably at the high end of the sellers and the buyers but that could change very quickly then we have the mixalon market that's right in between the two right whereas uh, tritanium had to uh, lose quite a bit of ground and pyrite basically lost next to nothing uh, we do have a landing you could say of mixalon on the 60 isk range 62 17 for the sellers 60 for the buyers where again a 2 billion buy order is uh, at the ready so clearly someone is willing to uh, buy a lot of resources at the current prices I think that is going to be nullsec related right if you do eventually expect some really big structures or really big ship fleets to uh, to be engaged and you've got losses to replace then this makes a lot of sense and it does keep Mexalon from falling back all the way but clearly uh, we're not continuing on the same hype pattern that we had last week which was quite impressive then for Isogen, I'm really always curious about that one and well, uh, kind of happy to see this because my expectation is sort of coming true. Uh, Isogen is now up to 640 ISK, 620 for the buyers and uh, what has clearly changed here as well is again the volumes on the homepage. We get two sell orders of around 10 million units but that is really it. Then you get to go down to that 650 which seemed quite... Um, quite ambitious just a couple of weeks ago where 180 million are are waiting for us but this is again that on a little bit of hype a little bit of uh, frenzy for resources expecting something potentially to happen could be Nelsic, could be faction warfare with direct enlistment could be other reasons as well uh, I read somewhere that there's some stuff uh, brewing uh, when it comes to war in high and things like that as well and Podrevan too uh, so overall right if the market if the game expects a lot of destruction a lot of need then they are going to all of a sudden buy a lot of isogen break through some of these reserves that have been uh, built up and put up onto the market and as long as those aren't too large right in the tens of millions that's something that eventually the market can just straight up decide yeah i'm gonna just buy that that 30 20 million uh, million batch of isogen uh, but then there's really not much stopping it to go all the way up to the next really big order of like 180 million and then the question is how much is still left out there i think we're starting to get exhausted because a 640 uh, 650 range for isogen is definitely pretty high and then if we compare it to uh, the mineral that should be higher in value than oxium uh, considering the amounts that you usually get from asteroids noxium i think we're getting pretty close to the spot where you would expect both of these to uh, to get to 
So Noxium is currently selling at 954, 910 for the buyers there. Uh, also going up. So again, there is clearly a need for resources, for mineral resources that's out there. And for Isogen, that has been a very big boon. So for those that have basically uh, been following me, I, I have been saying that I would expect Isogen to go uh, to a higher range eventually. I think here we are going to start to get very close. I cannot see Isogen hit uh, like an 800, 900 range when Noxium is in that kind of range. So we still have to, you know, there's, there's still going to be a little bit less. You can clearly see that in the volumes as well. One to two million are the biggest volumes. Uh, and then you get one order of eight million in the entire sell order book here for Noxium, right? Isogen is clearly a step above that. Players are able to gather like around a 5 million volume is definitely possible for some of the more organized groups that mine for Isogen. And uh, as a result, we should expect this to, to stop eventually, but maybe like even a 750 or something like that is on the books. When, it, when we look at the big gamblers here, 650, definitely pretty close. And on the money, a 999, uh, sorry, whoever put this sell order here for, for 117 million units. I don't think that's too realistic considering where Noxium is. But I think there is still a little bit of room to grow. But there's also clearly now room for the market to do its thing. For ICS to start go up and down and perhaps even more in tandem now than uh, with, uh, with Noxium. That is my expectation. I think uh, a lot of the sellers are getting exhausted. Finally, we got Nosek. So here is Zydrine that, of course, if Nosek is potentially uh, going to war, uh, that I think also means potentially uh, less supply coming from there, less time uh, spent mining, more time spent fighting, which means higher prices. So Isogen continuing to go up here as well. Quite uh, an impressive straight line, right? 20 day moving average going straight up, five day moving averages, keeping that very same pace for pretty much a month straight at this point. And we reach 2,400 disc for the sellers. 2300 for the buyers will have to accept i think that the nozick minerals have regained their status of being the most uh the most expensive minerals especially in high of course because we don't have any real ways of getting it uh, in Heisek all too easily and then mega site you may already have seen that on the ticker as well one year high point breaking through the 3000 is barrier clearly here something is happening as well i think that could be the podgevin story uh, where some action there is probably disrupting supplies as well and as a result mega site now has clearly regained its status as well of the most expensive tick one mineral 3200 3260 for most sellers 3100 for the buyers just zero choice in the trade hubs in Heisek, you have to follow the movement and unfortunately for industrialists here the move is clearly up by quite a lot so um this is an old dynamic which we really uh, have, haven't have seen in a decent while um, in the years before this, even during the resource crunch and things like that. Um, there were just so many, so there was still so much supply and there were so uh, so many reserves out there that Nelsic could go to war and the Nelsic minerals would, would hardly move. I think those days are over and we're back to Nelsic goes to war. That means Nelsic is not mining. That means Nelsic minerals are going up in price and can go uh, quite crazy. It's pretty impressive to see. Uh, there is, of course, probably in part as well that hype now for resources, right? Where you need more to, for instance, build capital ships, etc. Um, so really value of resource gathering uh, is, is definitely back, especially in uh, times of, uh, of hot war. And then finally, we still have Morphite that's not tied to the Tech 1 economy, but that is holding on again to that 40k uh, range. And very interestingly, I think at the moment going below the 40,000. Yeah, look at that. First few sellers just below 40,000 bars uh, at 38,000. And I think basically here, this market really is pretty stable. And uh, because Morphite is not sourced in high or anything like that, again, here we'll see sellers hold off a little bit now, pushing the price back above uh, the 40 for the sellers. And then a little bit more supply comes in. So we clearly here have a, a pretty mature and stable market at the moment. Uh, for for more fight, which is definitely a, a stabilizing effect for tech 2 as well uh, at the moment where I expected more uh, More volatility. It's not really happening uh, But let's take a look at PI next and that's coming in at 2410 Like that so 
A little bit of sign that there is, uh, right, especially the Isaac Minerals, that there's a little bit less demand, a little bit less of a, of a, a frenzy for resources. So let's see what this means for PI. Could be stalling here as well. Well, for the broadcast nodes, we again match the 2.5 million. And then we are starting to go back down a little bit. 2.5 for the sellers, 2.4 for the buyers though. Super narrow margin. Clearly the demand is still there. But if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I'm not really uh, that much of a specialist. This does start to look like a double top. And uh, that could perhaps be a shoulder. So we should not be uh, surprised if we start to see a little bit of a pullback uh, in advanced PI materials on a pattern like this. I think if we look at what was happening with the pilot services and then perhaps a little bit less than expected content from direct enlistment around faction warfare, you know, the market could perhaps decide that yeah, we're pretty much peaking out here. Let's wait and see what CCP does and let's maybe hold off on our frenzy for PI as well. I think that would be uh, very welcome news for CCP. As I've mentioned quite a lot before, I do think that uh, this is on the radar uh, for CCP because this is one of the most passive uh, sections of... Um of, of uh, stuff creation in the game and you know the CCP has mentioned that their philosophy at the moment is we want uh, risk and we want flying uh, to to mean value which is probably why uh, the current event for instance is all about taking the risk to fly out there go into a site become a suspect and that way uh, trying to help out your empire you want to you want to do that you want to get that value you have to take the risk you gotta go out there into space and pi is basically uh, the furthest away from that so let's take a look at the rest here is construction blocks peaking out but at the highest range for the year at 11,700 10,800 for the buyers so pretty normal margin starts to open up here a little bit again hesitation we might be peaking out but it is of course at a crazy high price Coolens is holding on to the 11,000 pretty easily. 11,7 here as well for the sellers. 10,900 for the buyers. A little bit of spread on the daily averages starting to show up here as well. Uh, but still again, very expensive. Enriched uranium uh, holding on to 12,500. It's 13,250 in fact for the sellers. 12,7 now for the buyers. So same story. I think uh, we can go through a lot of this list with uh, integrity response drones. Not matching the one year high point but clearly staying uh, easily above uh, 3 million even buyers are at 3.1 million our mechanical parts uh, are actually going up for the week as well highest range of the last two three months and then that's basically it we got one peak in december that's higher than what we're at now 12,000 for uh, the sellers 10,600 for the buyers so a bit of margin here not too surprising mechanical parts very easy to make on barren planets so there could be you know the expectation of easy supplies that can uh, that can keep uh, this stuff in check but again clearly we are very expensive miniature electronics continues to build another one year high point clearly here uh, you know i think this would be one of those charts where ccp uh, is, is starting to think maybe there is a bit of a problem with for instance uh, the miniature electronics we are talking a refined pi material it's on the same level as what you uh, have to do for coolants and yet the price here oh, it's actually the wrong one the price here is currently at 22,000 and buyers are forced up to 19,000 ish i think if buyers would go up to like 20k then i think ccp is starting to uh, perhaps gonna look into the whole pi uh, pi structure and and maybe i think again hitting the nerve bat uh, because this is a lot uh, a lot of risk that is is being uh, put into the coffers of those that are making miniature electronics then we get nano factories so had a, a one-year high point in february came down a little bit but again not coming close to uh, the previous range of 50 percent increase uh easily compared to to what we had last year 1.5 million to 1.4 million it's still not completely crazy but clearly it is very very expensive organic mortar applicators that one again could be a, a little bit worrying um, a doubling of the price over the last year and most of it just happening in the last three four months uh, so 750,000 here almost 1.5 million for the sellers and buyers yeah 1.35 million they have to follow suit here again as well 
um, recursive computing module. Uh, someone mentioned this on CC uh, when we looked at what was going to potentially be unlocked there in Faction Warfare. Uh, this was part of the menu and so uh, this is basically uh, really a complete breakout but partly it is of course speculation and information that was gathered from the test server. So recursive computing module 2.5 million, 2.1 million for the sellers starts here at a million that's over double the price and basically most of that action happening in the last month or so uh, so we are clearly seeing some pretty uh, crazy prices then we've got the robotics market that has now jumped well above the 100,000 disc mark mentioned it before unfortunately i'm like really busy uh, at work at the moment but uh, this is something that i think i'm going to try to go back to 105,000 for the sellers 104,000 for the buyers and on like plasma planets i believe it is you can basically make robotics on a single planet which i think is really cool also gives you a little bit more time before your planet is filled up so that low maintenance well uh, coolant is low maintenance mechanical parts is pretty low maintenance right stuff like that is easy to do you had really good prices so no reason to really switch from anything like that but now that robotics is back above 100k uh, i think that makes it worth it to to invest in in planets like that then we get our rocket fuel, again refined PI material at 15,500, extremely expensive and he's, has been holding on to this range for the last 2-3 months. Self-harmonizing power cores had a peak here in March up to almost 4 million, well above the 3.5 on a daily average here. Uh, is coming back down towards that previous range, so be a little bit careful, right, I think although I'm, I'm again not a specialist in this uh when when people would make like technical analysis i believe it is on these types of charts i think uh there are a few of them that would give some warning signs we're still at 3 million to the 2.7 million uh but this could have legs uh, towards again that range down here below 2.5 million for instance then we get our smart fab units and this one i think would be another one of those where yeah, we get our first few warning signals now, i always mentioned uh, far more unstable volumes here as well so the need for smart fab units is quite different from a lot of these others but this is a pretty sharp pullback down to 82,000 for the sellers and well below 70,000 for the buyers then we've got the sterile conduits that are easily again holding on to 1.5 million as well we're going for a million and even below for quite a, a bit of time um, early uh, last year and then we have basically been going up to uh, the highest range for the year then we get our supercomputers now above 150,000 disk can just completely different market completely different demand here 157,000 extremely expensive I'm not sure if you can make supercomputers on a single planet uh, but uh, that would be super cool as well of course then we get our synthetic oil starting to pull back a little bit but again from where 15,000 disk super expensive 14 5 is still really nice synthetic synapses uh, peaked out at 150,000 as well landing on 130 so definitely still pretty expensive our uh, transcranial microcontrollers with buyers just below 100,000 sellers above 100,000 as well basically full recovery from what what I used to know uh, specialized PI materials we're going for and then our water cooled CPU actually holding on quite nicely as well another one of those that actually had rather inconsistent volumes and definitely a super low range in the refined PI materials market but it's holding on to the 9.5 pretty easily 9000 disc for a first buyer here as well can go again can go very quickly if you look at these buyers right 9000 8477 you're there very very quickly so that's uh, the same reason why our smart fab units can go down in price pretty quickly despite the general trend in the market work cool cpu has that risk as well but for now it's holding on very nicely and then finally the wetware mainframes were uh, like at a one year high point of around 3 million just about 10 days ago and so again we do have a peak with a pull back towards 2.5 million sellers are still at 2.7 almost but buyers here starting to drop out at 1.9 million so i have been warning 
uh, that uh, CCP might look into this and hit the nerve bat. But I have to say, I have to be honest, if I look at these charts and some of these, I think the market is giving us a little bit of a warning here and there as well that there might just be exhaustion uh, when it comes to going to higher prices for PI as well. This might solve itself, uh, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, we'll see. Some of the others, though, are still doing quite crazy things. So the PI market, very, very interesting. I'm still in the same mode. Whatever I can find and make, I sell as quickly as possible. I believe these are very, very good times to make and sell PI. Next up, the advanced wound materials coming in at 34.30. There we go, as always, we start with the carbides, so we get crystalline carbonate actually dropping off here, very interesting. Uh, I personally would have expected that the Nelsic war would at least keep us stable, but no, it does look like some more supplies are coming online. Down to 135, 130 for the buyers, still gains, of course, compared to Underdisc, but pressure is not what I expected. Then for Kaldari, it's titanium carbide that, well, is landing on the 150 and actually already going back up a little bit. So slight bit of volatility here, but yeah, 156 to uh, 157, excuse me, to a 150 is really not all that special. Volumes going up here for titanium carbide as well on a couple of days. Then for Minmetar, we get fernite carbide, very stable uh, at the range of the last couple of weeks weeks which is just above 110 so that's not that much of a gain in value um i kind of hope that we don't see this pull back again because then CSP might nerf moon mining <laughs> once again uh if if players remain that industrial uh in this segment for amar though giving us a little bit of breeding room going back up nicely to a 166 and 159 we definitely have some differences between the four empires here in the carbide materials some going back down quite substantially others actually building the amar one is a little bit of a surprise that's actually building to, to basically being the most expensive one uh, but overall this is just I think regular market action uh, that depends on how much the players are bringing into the game Meta materials are a little bit down the line, uh, so let's take a look at those next. For Galente, it's photonic meta materials. All right, going back up uh, from the 10,000 disc mark. Right now, 11,000 for the sellers. So that's 10% gain. And look at those buyers forced up here as well. That is very nice. If this has legs across all of them, I may just have a uh, sell opportunity on this one. Uh, for Kaldari, it's not near meta materials. All right, also going up substantially for 15,000 disc for the sellers. 14.9 for the buyers as well does look like there's a little bit of a rush for meta materials here uh, that's forming plasmonic for minmetar though uh, giving us the warning that it's not uniform just yet 12,400 to 12,000 to 40 though very very narrow spread so clearly the demand is there and then we've got terrors meta materials all right for amar also breaking out one year high range uh, at 18,500, definitely lack of supply. And look at the buyers, 18, 17,000, definitely a bit of desperation here. So if you did what I did, which was uh, for the uh, for the advanced boom mats, I put my gamble into metamaterials. So I'm holding a few batches uh, that I bought, uh, basically like uh, at 10,000 and, and well below that. Um, I think we have to start to look into uh, that sell opportunity because this is three out of four that are going up substantially we get a one-year high point uh, this definitely feels like it could be building to something um, and unfortunately I thought in the months here January February we would see more volatility after the nerf to moon mining that never really materialized so I basically am looking for that jump off point take uh, like a 50% profit 60% profit and just be happy with that and look for the next opportunity we still have the other advanced boom materials to go as well with fermionic condensates actually building to a new range slightly higher here as well than the last couple of weeks and again 46,000 to 46 to 40 for the sellers definitely a narrow spread here then we get our ferrogel a nice recovery on this one i'm again uh, gonna be curious here 
here 27.2 to 26.3 so that's a pretty narrow spread considering this is a full recovery and basically the highest price point of the year that is definitely not bad fuller rights also uh, fully recovered 21 year high point almost a thousand disc and is now coming down but 778 to 760 again that is a narrow spread that we're seeing here so uh next up hypersynaptic fibers 6250 to 6200 and then we've got nano transistors 31431 yeah i think the story here for uh advanced boom materials it's not like we've got one year high points or anything like that but we do have, in my opinion, a very interesting tight spread between sellers and buyers, which I think might be a little bit of worry about what actually the Nelsic war is going to mean for the supplies of advanced moon materials in general. And uh, that there is this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to buy now, I'm going to try to buy now. So again, if you invested in that before the nerf, I think you are going to want to keep an eye on this market uh, pretty closely and looking for that sell opportunity finale composites uh, back below 1500 disc but definitely not that bad with again 1400 for the sellers 1360 for the buyers that's a super super narrow spread pressurized oxidizers coming back down from a one-year high point here as well 12920 12000 a little bit more uh, but still nowhere close to 10%. Then reinforced carbon fibers, 13.5 to 13,000. Again, really, really narrow. And finally, ceramic fibers also fully recovered and even doing quite nicely with 379 to 372, 373 actually already for the sellers coming in. So super narrow margins, uh, margins, excuse me, spreads in the advanced boom materials. I think this could build up to some nice sell opportunities for those like myself that are looking uh, to unload those uh, those investments. So uh, definitely pretty interesting because this could have a compounding impact on tick two ships that were already going up on the war drums as well. Uh, so take two ships next, 40-45. Let's take a look at these and here is the Basilisk. Ooh, that's actually uh, not what I expected. I thought we would easily defend the 150 and sure, the daily averages are well above 150. But look at those minimum prices. They have gone down quite substantially. So we are at 156 to 142 for the basilisk so it was last month that we had the nice sell opportunity uh, for the basilisk as 180 million uh, Cerberus is nice though that's clearly a little bit of a breakout going back above 150 million at 157 buyers though very very careful 140 million really big spread here so is this your sell opportunity for the Cerberus? You definitely have a profit if you bought at the right time, but I personally would again be looking for a better one. Uh, the curse holding on very nicely uh, to all of the gains, 175 to 160. Availability is not that great. And look at those minimum prices that are going up substantially here. So uh, this uh, could be primed again to go even higher on just a little bit of buying. And that would be the sell opportunity that I'm looking for. One year high point. I think I've got one or two curses out there that I bought probably below 130 or close to 130. Um, but a one year high point here, that would of course be the dream opportunity to unload. Like what the damnation did about a week ago at the 400 million mark. And it's now landing on 350 for the average price. 352 to 291 though, buyers are definitely able to open up quite a bit of a spread here as well. Volumes up substantially though. So uh, this sell opportunity right here, I didn't take advantage of it, uh, but that was clearly what we are mostly looking for when it comes to our tech two ship investments. Then we get the Deacon build up to that new range. And the question is, where do we go from here? Of course, at the moment, 26 to 23, that spread is just basically gone. So some of them, especially it seems the Amar ships have those buyers go up substantially. Then we've got the Eagle that peaked out at 180. Not a one year high point just yet. So I believe, I wanna believe that a better uh, a better sell opportunity is possible, but that was definitely a nice increase in price. And then again, 
looking at what advanced move materials is doing i thought we would be able to keep uh, those uh, those ranges quite easily but we are breaking down here down to 157 to 140 uh, six and then here is for instance that's what we're waiting for here is the eos breaking out sellers are coming in at 365 million at this point 324 for the buyers and so i bought one at 254 and you could have easily bought an eos at 250 uh one year high point yeah this is for instance one that you can definitely take a very very nice profit on at the moment uh, again if you get like a dozen of them don't try to sell all of them i think here you definitely need some patience then but one or two of them you can definitely take like um 100 30 million profit something like that probably for the best buyers definitely above 100 million profit is possible on the eos at the moment and that is exactly what we were hoping for when it comes to buying take two ships through the summer where everyone was uh, all about uh, activity solo this is terrible the game is dying that is when of course the savvy investors uh, make their move and this is your time to shine guys you can definitely make some super nice profits on those purchases Aries um, I think that was last week that it was really building so that was your best sell opportunity there it does go down quite quickly so we reached 70 million we're down to 62 million for the uh, sellers 52 for the buyers though so nowhere close to that 30 to 40 million range that is just gone at this point uh, but that was another one year high point definitely sellable uh, flycatcher we saw that last week as well that was the breakout we've been waiting for for quite a long time and i think i mentioned in all these weeks in january and february if you still wanted to jump in on a take two ship opportunity flycatcher was it this was your first sell opportunity we are going to go back down but i think we we won't go uh, below the 50 million anymore 56 now for the sellers 51 for the buyers so you do have this response of course because uh, you and me are not the only ones that are, are, are keeping an eye on this take two market and are riding these waves so there is too much supply that does come in and for those that really want to take a risk, right, you could, for instance, decide, well, I'm going to actually try to again buy a flycatcher at 50 million and hope that I can unload it at 70 plus or something like that. That is definitely, uh, definitely possible because there are enough speculators in these take two ships there are enough ships out there as well uh, that we can get this volatility wave rolling and it does seem to me like it it has started especially with nullsec uh, if that could really explode uh, there could be some really juicy opportunities the guardian this of course again uh, with patience right it all depends on the tactic uh, that you want to do so for instance here the eos looks really juicy uh, but that could have been the Guardian like uh, a month ago and even um, one and a half months ago, right? That look, I could sell here, right? Buy for a million, sell at 150, best price for the last eight months. Looks pretty good. Then we got a one year high point, probably a 170, 175, something like that. Not bad. And yet for those that were smart enough to actually wait when it comes to the guardian you are now selling them at 180 million, 172 for the buyers. And if you were... Uh, kept a very close eye on it uh, just about five days ago you could have sold them for 200 million doubling your isk all of a sudden on the guardian but another very nice wave which will hopefully bringing enough supplies to crash the price back down now you won't see 130 minus 100 million or anything like that anytime soon anymore but perhaps a new jumping point and the start of volatility uh, is what's definitely possible here then we get the heretic just a straight up jump to 50 million some of them will really respond in a different situation as uh, in a different way as well um, so basically up until february you could have jumped in below 40 million of course if you had like the very best opportunities were even below 30 million but now the market just decided 52 to 43 million that's it heretic is up and might just get stuck on this price range for quite a bit interdictors haven't been the most volatile um, when it comes to a lot of volatility i want to say what uh, does have more volatility quite more often and here we go here is the hound and I, I think i did mention around a month ago if you were still looking for a jumping point as well uh, and you wanted to take that take two risk and uh, then uh, still bombers were still my play and here's uh, working out hound going for 24 million 
21 million for the buyers and you could have bought them probably 16 17 million maybe even close to 15 million in just the last month or so and if you bought at the really cheapest opportunities you definitely have some very close to 15 million so here is that hound breakout uh, we always keep an eye on some Triglavian ships as well. So Ikiturs are back above 500 million. Yeah, 512 to 459 though. Again, here and there the buyers are really keeping that big spread alive. Uh, the Ishtar is starting to come back down. So that's that double top. Uh, that double top here as well that does quite often signal a bit of a pullback uh, 164 to 154 but again don't expect the 130 to show up anymore right this was where you wanted to buy your ishtars and this is where you want to sell above 180 um, but hopefully again hopefully this is the start of volatility uh, with that one warning again uh, the ishtar is just such a, a nice all-around ship it's useful in pve useful in pvp um, and unfortunately very useful for botting as well so it has that broad market that does mean that it has more stability than some of the others like for instance a stealth bomber uh, the Kirin, here we go, another, uh, it was basically just a couple days ago, but we had a sell opportunity at 30 million ISK. Uh, very, very nice, if you could have bought below 15 million, of course. I think we're going down, oh no, look at that, 29.8 still for the sellers, 23 million for the buyers as well. Uh, logistics frigate coming on the menu, I think, for some Nelsic fleets as well. And so that big buying here, uh, a little bit of desperation. You can see that here as well, I think, in my opinion. But that's a one-year high point. That's another jump off point and a double your money trade here for the Kirin. And it was not even that long ago, two months ago, that you could have uh, jumped in on this one. So very, very nice. Uh, it is coming true. The real question is, will this volatility keep up? Of course, I do fully expect this Kirin to do a pretty massive pullback because quite a few players will be holding this logistics uh, frigate and that is then really can we continue to trade on tech 2 does this have enough momentum that does make it very very interesting the potential i think is there the manticore actually unfortunately not doing what i like to see for stealth bombers basically stabilizing at around that 20 million range 23 to 19 million does mean that it is now cheaper than the hound which is very unusual for the manticore so it could be primed for a big buying and a sell opportunity be on the lookout for that i think it could happen nemesis same story still a stealth bomber below 20 million 18 to 17.5 million i would even say if you absolutely want to uh, still or if you need to buy something now in take two uh, then the nemesis stealth bomber i think would be it because it is now far cheaper than both the manticore and then the hound so where are you going to buy 100 200 stealth bombers uh, it's not going to be the hound it's probably going to be the nemesis now we get the nighthawk um yeah battle uh, cruisers command ships definitely lower volume so far more risk i'd never hold more more than a single or two uh, of these but yeah it just doesn't have the big breakouts just yet who knows what comes later of course 305 to 276 pretty narrow spread here so clearly the bargain prices are gone and then the oniros doing the double top if you have invested in your ears i've always held off on this one because of the very low volumes but if you get one or two for sale you are looking at 170 million at the moment definitely pretty good especially if you still bought below 100 million you get your nice profit margin uh, but again from i think a technical standpoint this does look like another double top so this could be your last sell opportunity for a little bit and then we get the purifier which did go up to 30 million so another stealth bomber that did very nicely and then the supply is coming in so you can clearly see how we are declining and traders are taking lower and lower margins 23 million now 20 million here and that is the, the problem that i was mentioning right if you didn't come in with all right i'm gonna try to unload one that was still a smart move but i'm gonna try to unload 20 just below 26 million someone comes in with another 32 and someone is like all right just another undercut here's another 18 at 25.5 million here's another 20 at 24.5 million here's another 26 at 23.9 million so this is the problem uh with uh with um 
going too big right and then trying to just grab all of those profits all at once you are creating this wave but for us that basically have that patience and are willing to go you know what i'm just gonna buy two or three or maybe four purifiers 100 million i think that i can unload that very quickly that also means that potentially they're creating another jumping point for you right here as the buyers are now just above 20 million of course not the very best price that we've seen for the purifier but it is definitely a sharp pullback with a lot of supply here uh, that's gonna potentially even crater this down so you got at the moment considering this volatility look where the daily averages are well below the entire chart this is where people are desperate enough as well to say well i'm just gonna fulfill a buy order and of course it is a little bit risky if you look at the full one year chart but if the nullstick war has some legs has some staying power then more spikes and more volatility are definitely possible and then this could actually be a new opportunity already for you to jump in on a purifier at around 20 million so it's a very very interesting time i think for those that are looking to trade in take two ships the rook is falling back a lot as well look at those minimum prices counter to most trends going even lower 154 to below 140 this would be another one where you are taking a little bit of a risk right so maybe one maybe two but 12.5 a day is not a lot so be careful with the volumes but this feels like another opportunity for you to jump in on then we get the saber and that's what of course we're hoping to see then uh, after we've jumped in that's 60 million <laughs> that's not bad a 50 percent jump here in about a month 55 now for the sellers 46 for the buyers definitely uh, a sell opportunity but again that same problem shows up very quickly as we go to the 60 million here's 23 and then here is 17 and then here is 63 that's a really big problem then here is another 58 so if this continues of course and i think some of you will want to take a little bit of profit from the saber but if this continues this could really bring the market down on a lot of ships and that is when right sellers become desperate and those that are willing to go in not too big a trade can grab a couple of really cheap sabers again and then jump out at the right time so very very cool times the scalpel just had its spike up to 30 million here as well currently going back down well below 20 and buyers are at 18 million 18.5 on a lot of supply so if you are hoping for or if you're expecting this rolling pattern to potentially continue as well uh, then you would you probably want to try to grab a scalpel close to 18 million then we get the scimitar back above 150 176 actually another sell opportunity here that is going to form a one year high point volumes on this a little bit better actually in the last couple of weeks so you could definitely try there uh, to sell and then the slip near is holding on below 300 million not making that much of a move the vagabond is uh, somewhat slowly making its way back to a 180 uh 175 now for the sellers definitely a difficult choice right 150 to 175 it's not that great it's a small trade i personally would again wait for a pronounced one year high point on the vagabond uh decent volumes on this one as well but of course your buying time is over and look at those minimum prices here at the tail end definitely uh going back up so there does it does feel like it could be primed to shoot up here on not that much volumes and then finally we get the Zarmas that landed on 400 million and I did mention that looked like a jumping point. Market followed, decent volumes and here is the turnaround and we're back selling for 476. So for those that were, uh, you know, looking closely enough to the market, managed to buy a Zarmas below 400 million. We're already looking at a nice 60, 70 million profit pretty easily. That is, of course, the advantage of the Triglavian trade. While you need a lot more cash to get in on that, uh, a single ship can very easily get you uh, a pretty decent profit isquise. So pretty, pretty cool time, I think, for the take two ship markets. Uh, more and more sell opportunities. And then the real question that I have is, will all those speculators really start to create a wave of volatility that you can take advantage of? um over the longer term it's gonna be interesting next up the tech tree ship market 5720 
that's pretty late so definitely an interesting eve talk uh, for me personally let's go through the destroyers with all right unexpected but confessor breaking out all that volatility in tech 2 i think is finally also starting to come in here for the tactical destroyers 64 million for the sellers 57 million for the buyers for those that are making them or that did take the risk of investing in some confessors. Very, very nice sell opportunity. Is this the start of volatility in tactical destroyers? I am not sure. Again, I think that uh, Tech 2 ships are still considered better value at the moment, but clearly uh, they still have their place in. Uh, in Nullsec and what I find very interesting as well is that it's just 100, 200 over 3 days that has caused this to happen. So a very small volume in this market can trigger a very nice sell opportunity. Unfortunately, a very small volume can probably cause a pretty big crash in the price as well. Then we get the Hecate, went to 60 million a couple months ago and is just slowly uh, bleeding its way back to the 55 range, 57 to 54 on this one. Uh, so that's a couple months zero action unfortunately, that can happen as well. But the Jackdaw, clearly also a very nice ship, breaking out to 80 million, mar uh, million, 71 currently for the sellers, but very very nice sell opportunity again for those that bought, uh, let's say below 50 million down here. So it does happen, volumes wise though, pretty difficult. So it's gonna be interesting to see if this has legs. I personally think that we've got a far lower chance to see a lot of volatility here although you don't need that much volume uh, then in the tech 2 ship market and then what is actually what used to be the case in my opinion for um for tech 3 cruisers has become real for tech 3 destroyers this can be manipulated right this amount of ships for 50 million someone can buy all of these start releasing them at 80 million that can happen here. That is doable now in the tactical destroyer market. So interestingly enough, in my opinion, while the current uh, spikes in the Confessor Art and Jackdaw are probably demand driven, um, these markets are now the ones that potentially can be manipulated with not even that big of a wallet, which is a very big risk in my opinion, um, because it does make jumping into that market uh, a little bit more difficult in my opinion, because finding that right timing, I mean, you would say, yeah, then Zweepel right now, because that one is, is going down below 50 million again, uh, but you never know when that's going to happen because that's going to depend on someone wanting to manipulate the market rather than having that um, that uh, that pure uh, meta part or or part of the big market move uh, that that can make you the trade so i think here that has really switched i'm personally not a big fan of trading in tactical destroyers even though we're seeing these two massive opportunity opportunities in the jackdaw and in the confessor i would personally prefer uh, to go to the cruisers so here is the legion that had a very nice spike at 250 sliding on 200 million the bad news is though that clearly those bottoms are going up 204 to 193 the spreads are coming down here as well um, so it is more and more risky because before this we clearly had well well below 180 you jump in here you jump in here you jump in here and then you sell at 200 or 190 or something like that that is becoming a little bit more difficult, but this market is larger. There's more trades happening. Sorry, bro, but I am currently uh, recording. And then we get to Loki. And that's what I like, right? Look at that sell opportunity. Buy, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell right now again. Loki currently going for 219 million. Buyers coming in at 200 million. So a sell opportunity right here. For the produce, we had one just a couple of weeks ago. And this, look at that, buyers below 200 million starts to look like potentially a jumping point. 194 here. So yeah, I would jump in on a Proteus and then hope to again sell close to 250. And finally, the Tengu is actually again having a little bit of a, a difficult time, but another spike well above 230. So basically, we're still very expensive. The jumping points are becoming harder to find, uh, but the Loki has sell opportunity and the Proteus, I think, has a jumping point right now with a far better pattern 
far better chart in my opinion for active trading than uh, what we've seen from the tactical destroyers and then we still have the extra product for the week which is the mining ships so let's take a look at those coming in at 102.30 All right, let's go. Uh, maybe we'll start with the... Well, may I, yeah, we'll just go for the mining barges first. Here are the mining barges. These are the Tech 1 versions. And I would say the Coveter, pretty expensive at the moment. Definitely the high end of the range. 65 million to 54 million. Not a lot of supply. Here is the Procurer charts. Not too easy to get a good chart. But clearly, again, highest end of the range. Pretty expensive at around 60 million. Well, we've seen what's been happening with the minerals, especially uh, the uh, the Nelsic minerals. So that is obviously part of the answer here. And then we get the Retriever. I think generally pretty um, pretty popular ship as well, going close to, but still below 60 million, 58 to 53 million. I would say they're definitely pretty expensive Tech One ships. But look at the volumes as well since November. I do think that this shows that there is a lot of mining happening with the mining barges uh, at the moment. So very cool to see. Also explains our pretty nice supplies of minerals across the board. Uh, except for Nelsic, <laughs> that is slowing down at the moment. Then for the Take 2 versions, here are the Exhumers. So the Hulk is uh, staying below 250 million, but again on the one year chart is pretty expensive. 250, 248 for the sellers, 222 for the buyers, pretty narrow spread, um, which I think is always the case or quite often the case for the uh, Take 2 mining ships. We get the Machina that again is pretty expensive at the moment, but not breaking out all that crazily. 253 to 230 daily volumes almost a hundred clearly up as well though in the last couple of months and then we've got the skiff that is actually going up in price as well pretty expensive at the moment 215 million to 200 million um, so mining ships are pretty expensive at the moment but i think we've got pretty damn nice volumes so i'm not too worried about supplies myself uh overall and uh yeah feels like it's it's actually in a pretty healthy place i think when it comes to mining and its output but then also the potential losses uh, and the need to replace these types of ships uh, so then we can still go for the orca uh, which is i think the most um, the most uh, common booster when it comes to the mining fleets and you can also clearly tell uh, that this one is pretty expensive volume wise nothing too crazy but 2.1 billion to 1.9 billion is definitely a far more expensive ship so uh, i would say yeah, the mining barges they're being used quite a lot but in all likeliness there's there's a bit of destruction happening in that part as well and at the moment well we are uh, in a pretty um expensive uh, period of time as i think the nelsic the big nelsic groups are building up making fleets wanting to be ready uh for that war being able to replace them as they go more and more into hot war their supplies start to dwindle so they've got to use their reserves and uh, that has an impact on the market that becomes more and more expensive as well so pretty interesting times i would say especially from a market standpoint in eve online at the moment and a couple of potentially really interesting months as well unfortunately not as much content as what i hoped for the patch uh, but yeah it's just a couple of months until the 20 year anniversary which i think is going to be a, a pretty important event to ccp so i do expect some cool stuff to happen there and that's going to be it for this eve talk then guys thank you very much for uh, uh for listening and as always i'll see you guys next time Next time.